Image is crucial, and the Ford Bronco Sport knows this all too well. It has capitalized on the picture painted by SUVs of the last century, but does it have the spirit? Short answer, no. If that's what you want, I would recommend looking for a full-size new Bronco. While thoroughly reworked, this is ultimately based on a Ford Escape, but the Tough Guy Act does have some merit to it, more so than basically all of its competitors. While the Escape's 1.5 liter turbocharged inline three remains the base power plant, the control arms, the springs, the shocks, the bushings, they're all different. This also comes with standard all wheel drive, with the top spec Badlands getting a trick rear differential, which makes a huge difference. The non-Badlands models are more bro than Bronco. They lean heavily on nostalgia and simple lines like a bad reboot. Honestly, this is enough to make it stand out in the class. If you want more zest, you can still buy the base Heritage Edition, which comes with a white roof and wheels, along with some other styling cues. For 2024, there's a new low-key black edition for the Big Bend and a new throwback freewheeling edition, which has enough stickers to rival a sorority girl's laptop and is one AutoZone hood scoop away from making me pass out. Appearance packages aside, I do like the petite utilitarian look, even if it reminds me a little bit too much of the first generation Ford Escape. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Briefly, I'd like to thank the friendly folks at Royal South Toyota in Bloomington, Indiana for letting me test drive a couple of Bronco Sports to make this video possible. Royal is dedicated to the community. If you're in the market, check them out. One thing I need to reiterate, the Bronco Sport is small. It's about 10 inches shorter than a Subaru Forester, which helps us achieve over 30 degrees of approach and departure angle with the Badlands. You'll have 7.8 to 8.8 .8 inches of minimum ground clearance. While you can get bash plates in a black diamond package, the Badlands come standard with those, along with front tow hooks and a high clearance bumper. The regular models come with more angle limitations and an inferior all-wheel drive system when compared to a Subaru Forester. The Ford also costs more. For 2024, this starts above 32 grand. For that money, you'll get standard LED headlights, along with heated mirrors, proximity entry, and rear glass that opens up. All of them will come with some form of alloy wheels, but the Badlands is the only one to get a helpful front camera system. Stepping inside, this follows the small, rugged SUV rubric to a T. You have physical controls, minimal glossy finishes, modern tech that's far from overwhelming, and overall durable materials. The quality is debatable. Now, all the details and features I'm talking about are for the 2024 models. This one is a 2022 with 35,000 miles, and it's held up pretty well. But it has its creaks here and there. The panel construction, the fit and finish, it's adequate. But especially here with the Big Bend, the cabin is caked with cheap plastics. Most of its competitors provide a more upscale feel if that's what you're after. The Badlands, the Outer Banks, they do look and feel more premium, but at least the comfort levels remain the same as power seats with adjustable lumbar are available even here on the Big Bend. And while the seat bottoms could offer a little more thigh support, I think they'll be agreeable for most people. The back support is nice. Even if I get in while I'm covered in mud, at least everything in here feels feels pretty easy to clean off. Moving on to the tech, you have an available partial digital gauge cluster that's fairly configurable. And at the center of all, we have an eight inch infotainment system that does not have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but the response time and resolution are good, unless it's having a bad day. And this has the features you would expect, but nothing more. A head up display, ventilated front seats, and heated rear seats are absent, but this is a tough crossover for tough people. They don't need any of that, but at least they do deserve six speakers, which this is not a good sound system, but should be sufficient for most people's usage. They also do offer a 10 speaker Bang & Olufsen system, which certainly adds more punch, but the treble and high frequencies can get a little harsh. More importantly, I think this comes with good storage throughout the cabin. I especially like the grippy shelf below the screen. And I also think the squared off aesthetic really matches the personality that this thing is going for. Though I would have appreciated a more satisfying shift lever versus the dial. At six foot three, I have 
copious amounts of headroom, good knee room, but if the seat is set to my comfortable driving position, then adults in the rear will be short on legroom. By any means, this is workable, and once I'm situated, the seat is pretty far off the ground, so I have stellar size support, there's rear charging ports, rear console vents, and a center armrest too. Plus, there's built-in, like, tablet pouches, something I haven't seen before. And in the trunk, surprisingly, there's no availability of a power rear gate, but you do have a tall, wide, yet kind of shallow space with some lasso tie-down points, seats that fold fairly flat, a rubberized floor instead of carpet, and a standard spare tire that is actually available as full size. While they have the refined sound of a 20-year-old blender, the power output from the 1.5 liter and especially the 2 liter turbo 4 is more than acceptable. For 2024, the 2 liter is exclusively available in the Badlands Edition. I drove that briefly and was impressed. It has great passing power and can really romp through the gears. With about 250 horsepower, car and driver got that to 60 in 5.9 seconds. So let's put some numbers to the 1.5 liter. the line even with the three pot this takes off yeah it begins to die down after that but still zero to 60 and eight seconds flat is more than respectable i think the eight speed automatic is wonderfully tuned for this vehicle it kicks down at a moment's notice especially if you're in its sport mode it doesn't hesitate from a stop and it executes smooth takeoffs and mostly seamless shifts And so long as you're not at reckless driving speeds, passing power here is sufficient. It can tow about 2,000 pounds with either configuration. Pulling up to 65 miles per hour is pretty easy. Tire noise is there, but wind noise is what I notice more. For the money, there are more quiet crossovers, though this is inoffensive. As I mentioned earlier, all-wheel drive is standard, and this is a reactive setup. It primarily drives the front wheels. Unless it detects wheel slippage, it senses conditions in which it should be a 4x4, or you switch your goat mode. Which I cannot imagine the sheer joy of the boardroom that figured out a way to incorporate this acronym into the Bronco name. With each system, a maximum of 50% of torque can be sent to the rear, but the Badlands allows for true torque vectoring, which again can send a lot of power to the wheel with traction. This twin clutch rear differential does a convincing impression of a locking diff, and you can lock or prevent the rear axle from disconnecting through a button. It's similar to what was once offered with the Focus RS, which is a great thing. With the standard all-wheel drive system, you just have different modes and a brake vectoring system to divert torque side to side. The difference in how it hooks up is drastic. The rear diff does make a big difference, but we also should remember that the tires with the Badlands are also more aggressive. It's not only impressive on icy roads, it's also great for off-roading from what I've seen. And it seems like it should compete with the best of the class when it comes to exploring mild to somewhat tricky off-road trails. In other words, Subahu? The tone will become much more serious though when it comes to the gas mileage, which is notably behind most competitors. Driving this on a dismal road, if we're snobs, this is not as smooth as a well-dampened sedan, but it's supposed to be a Bronco, so you will get bucked around a little bit, but it's ultimately forgiving over the worst roads, even though it will jostle you a little bit more than many of its well-mannered competition. This features stiffer shocks when compared to the Ford Escape, especially in the Badlands, but it has softer springs and sway bars. These changes are supposed to improve control and wheel articulation while reducing abuse when off-road. However, there are some on-road consequences. Moving up to higher speeds, it honestly changes direction in a timely manner, and even though body roll isn't horrible, it doesn't feel all that stable when you get closer to its limits. There's more of that wiggling, some like secondary motion kind of going on. The car just isn't as settled as what I would want and what you do get from some other small SUVs. Though at least it's not nauseating to drive on windy road. And the steering, while numb, is pretty direct and nicely weighted. This does come with 
standard independent rear suspension. So really, as long as you're not pushing this thing, I think you'll be happy with how this handles. But if you want a more engaging, composed crossover, the Mazda CX-5, CX-50, or Honda CRV will suit you much better. Seeing out of the Bronco Sport is also different from basically any other compact crossover. The hood is so prominent. And the dashboard is also remarkably short. The windows aren't giant or anything. It's pretty easy to drive, though when it comes to reliability, the future of the sport isn't clear. Ford has acknowledged and fixed a few things through an oil separator and a fuel injector recall. They supposedly tweaked the engine design back in 2020 to tackle notorious coolant consumption with both of the EcoBoost engines offered. And I'm not hearing much of those complaints with the sport so far. Instead, select folks have had water pump leaks, brake issues, and some infotainment or electrical woes too. This is based on carcomplaints.com, owner forums, and consumer reports, but outside of the first model year, owner reviews on Edmunds and cars.com are generally positive, which is reassuring. While I wouldn't advise one if having Japanese reliability is one of your top priorities, now that a lot of big problems have been addressed, my mind is somewhat at ease. Safety-wise, the Bronco Sport has scored well, but it also has not gone through the IIHS's updated tests. And for driving aids, surprisingly adaptive cruise is an option on every trim, but autonomous braking, lane departure prevention are standard. A common complaint with small crossovers is that they follow the same formula too closely. They have to do most things for most people, so it's hard for them to have a real personality outside of a half-baked trail chief nipple ripper pro edition. It will never replace the traditional Bronco in capability or soul, but those trucks come with a few more on-road compromises and a much higher price tag in most configurations. The Bronco Sport is about the image first, but it's more like an actor playing a superhero than it is a basement dweller in spandex. It's no Captain America, but it's been in the gym and on a diet. It does provide a rugged feeling through not just the looks, but the details. And it really has the capability to back that up with the Badlands Edition. That makes this a true standout in the segment, especially if you like stickers. And it does all of this without forgetting its sensible purpose. Maybe a Subaru Forester is more rational, and maybe it's realistically just as capable, but if you want something less bloated and more charismatic, don't forget about the Bronco Sport. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me take on the ever elusive YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff. Become a channel member for additional content and to help further improve quality. I'll catch you in the next one.